Well, they actually have a lot of control and they control what micro populations are in that area. They control interactions with fungi. They change the pH to their preferences. They increase the availability of nutrients. They do all kinds of great things in this little area. Let's just describe for the viewers um, what the rhizosphere is, and then we'll, we'll talk a few things, uh, talk a little bit around that. All right. So the rhizosphere is a layer around the roots, which is about three millimeters thick. So it's a very thin film around the roots, and it happens mostly at the root tips, because all the activity on roots is at root tips. And it's a special layer um that the plants control and what i found really fascinating about this whole subject is that that three millimeters is completely different than anywhere else in your soil and plants control what that layer is like okay we think of plants as being fairly passive animals uh, organisms they're just sitting there doing their thing but they actually have a lot of control and they control what micro populations are in that area. They control interactions with fungi. They change the pH to their preferences. They increase the availability of nutrients. They do all kinds of great things in this little area. And scientists have been studying this for at least 20 years now, but it's a fairly new thing. And we don't, know everything but we're starting to learn more and more about what actually happens in this this interface hmm. so and the, the key to this is that the roots will make all kinds of compounds in the leaves shunt them down to the roots and the roots ooze them out of the roots and they're called exudates so right. this category of chemicals a, as a group is called exudates um, and they do a variety of things. So one of the things they do is they squeeze out some extra sugar. Well, sugar is like candy to microbes, especially bacteria. So microbes come and they live around this root, basically sucking up all the sugar that the plant's giving it. Well, just, just let me stop you for a second there. So, so you're telling me the plant, the plant's creating energy and yep. storing, storing energy in its body in various ways in the form of sugar it's also releasing some of that energy into the soil yep okay Mike, what's, re what's really amazing is that the average plant puts out about 30 percent of what it makes in the leaves out of the roots what? Some, <laughs> some as high as 50 percent okay so from a plant's perspective, this makes zero sense yes. on the surface, at least, right? Yes, yes. It's saying it's working like crazy to get this sun and make these sugars and, and get all the water and nutrients in there so they can do this. And then it, it just gives it away. Okay? <laughs> makes no sense to me, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But it, but it does. And, and here's why. Um, it puts the sugars out and these microbes come and eat it. So what it does is it actually controls how many microbes are around the roots. Now, microbes do some interesting things. First of all, they reproduce very quickly. So they can, they can double in number every 20 minutes in a lab, at least. I don't know if it's a, that fast in the soil, but they reproduce very quickly. They don't live very long. So these bacteria are living there. They're growing, multiplying, then they die. Well, what are dead microbes? Well, dead microbes is compost, right? Yeah. It's full of nutrients. So the plant now doesn't have to go way out in the soil to find its nutrients because the microbes bring it to the plant. And when the, the microbes die, they become food for more microbes. So the, plant, the plant is gardening. The plant is <laughs> making, a comp they're making a compost pile right around that root yeah yeah right That's and fascinating. they feed it not only that but there's other compounds that make special chemicals that attract only those microbes it wants around the roots okay and it can control 
the populations. So if it wants bacteria A, it sends out a certain signal, a certain compound, and it gets more bacteria A around it. Okay, And that's important because bacteria are cannibalistic. They eat each other. But it gets the microbes that are not pathogens. So now come along some pathogen microbes, and they want to get at this sugar too, and they, they come in, but they get eaten up by the good guys. Right, right. So we have this war going on, but this layer of bacteria are now protecting the roots from the pathogens, right? Um, the other thing that, that's really interesting, I mentioned earlier about mycorrhizal fungi, and they come in and we probably heard that they make an association with this fungi, that the two go together and the fungi help the roots, supplies water and phosphate to the roots. What's really amazing is that the plant decides if they're going to get married, okay? So if a plant root is growing and there's lots of phosphate around, it doesn't get married to these fungi. Hmm. But if there isn't enough phosphate, what it does, it sends out special compounds, special chemicals that attract the fungi. And now the fungi come along and they actually hook up. The fungi actually burrows into the root and there's a physical connection with these two organisms. Now they're married, they're partners. And the plant keeps giving the fungi sugars. Remember, fungi don't have any green leaves, so they can't make their own food. They have to find it somewhere. So the root is giving them sugars and the fungi is giving phosphates and water to the root. But what that means is the roots don't have to grow as big because they don't have to go and find this water and phosphate. Mm -hmm. uh, the fungi are doing it for them. Yes. And the fungi are much more efficient because they make these small filaments and they get into all the nooks and crannies in soil that are too small for plant roots. Mm. And so they're doing all the work. So the plant is handing over these expensive sugars, but getting stuff for it. Yeah. Right. Um, the other thing it does is it conditions the pH. So it actually sends out hydrogen ions, which drops the pH. So the pH of the rhizosphere can be two pH units lower than the rest of the soil. Right. So my soil is a, about a 7.3, 7.4, which is quite alkaline. And in alkaline soil, there's certain nutrients plants have trouble getting. Mm -hmm. But my plant roots are coated in this pH that's two units lower. So they got a, like a 5.56, which is just perfect for plants. Mm. So that's dissolving minerals. So plants have an easier time picking up the minerals because they're actually growing in acidic soil, even though I think my soil is alkaline, <laughs> right? So the, the, the neat thing about this rhizosphere is that plants have control over it. Right. If they don't want it quite so acidic, then they don't put out the hydrogen ions. If they don't want fungi associating with them, they don't attract them. Um, they manipulate the micropopulation around their roots to suit the plant. Man. Now, the one thing I do want to mention is that all of this is done without thought. Okay, I mean, we use words like, oh, the plants are doing this and the plants are doing that, but there's no th thought process here. They're, they're not sitting there at night having a board meeting saying, geez, we better throw some more sugar out there. We need more, more microbes, right? All of these things are happening strictly on a chemical reaction basis. There's no intelligence in these plants. Right. Um, but what we're learning is that plants have a tremendous control over this rhizosphere layer. And um, and they manipulate it to their own benefit. <laughs> That's amazing, and I, I I couldn't help but think, you know, it it also speaks to the importance of having, you know, always we all know as gardeners that it's 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 important to have the adequate amount of sunlight for the plants to grow, but we're thinking about the plant getting energy to make our tomatoes. We're not yeah. thinking about the plant getting energy so it can donate, uh, you know, uh, uh, donate sugars to the soil to manipulate the rhizosphere so that it's set up in such a way that helps make nice tomatoes. Uh, yeah. We're not thinking about this sort of extra energy it needs to produce to just get everything the way it wants. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's, that, that just 
it enriches my understanding of why I, it's important. I think there, yeah, there's one other thing that I, I haven't actually read anywhere, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is a big part of this process. Is one thing I do know is that when I grow plants in soil, and even if I don't enrich that soil and I don't add compost and so on, the soil gets better wherever those roots are. Mm. Right yeah. around the roots, you dig them up five years later and the soil is better there. <laughs> and I think the reason is that what the plants are doing is they're adding a lot of organic matter in that space around the roots on their own. And those are those sugars that are going down there, right? Right. Yeah. So they basically create their own little compost pile underneath them. And that's what they're growing. In. Right. But it's amazing how soil improves over the years just by growing stuff yes. you don't do anything else in gardening just grow stuff and they can be weeds for all that matter yes they grow yes. something in the soil keep it covered with plant material and slowly the soil gets better and better and better yeah yeah now, most gardeners don't even realize that because uh we're in a, in a vegetable garden we dig it up every year we so it's hard to remember what it looked like five years ago uh, but if you do that in a perennial garden and you dig up a plant that's been there for 10 years, I'm always amazed that right around the roots, the soil is black now, mm. you know, and six inches away from the root ball, it, it, it's still clay. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's a really and good I point. I think that's because this, that a lot of this material that the plants are making in the leaves ends up going down there to help. Them.